Praise the Lord. Why so as we pray together? Heavenly Father, we bless your name for our Bible study. Thank you for bringing us here and thank you for the challenges we're receiving. We're asking, Lord, as we come to the study tonight, we pray. Your spirit will take your word and apply it to every heart in Jesus' name. And we pray that this word will enrich every soul. As you are calling us yourself, we pray that, Lord, none of us will reject or refuse the call in Jesus' name. You have done everything you can do. Jesus died on the cross for everyone. And we pray, Lord, there will be that response of faith in the heart of everyone. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We can see now. We're coming to the Bible study tonight. And we're looking at the second part of chapter 8 of Daniel. But I want to start from Daniel chapter 7, verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the son of the matters. That was the very first vision or the very first dream that Daniel was going to have. But now he had the second one in chapter 8. Look at chapter 8 verse 1. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first. That means that so far now, Daniel had had two visions recorded in chapter 7 and 8. These two visions had a profound effect on him. After the first vision, we read in the last verse of chapter 7, the effect or the impact it had on Daniel. He said, he the two is the end of the matter. That is talking about the record of the first vision. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations, my meditations, my thoughts much troubled me. And my countenance changed in me. But I kept the matter in my heart. When he saw the first vision and he thought about the meaning that really bothered him. Because he understood the impact of it upon the children of Israel and upon the world at large. The understanding of the details of the reign of the coming kingdoms and the empires overwhelmed his spirit to such a degree that his vigor, his temperance, his, his appearance became weak and pale. Yet he treasured the secrets of the Lord in his heart. The impact of that second vision, that is the one we read about in chapter 8, was even more distressing. Look at the last verse in chapter 8, that is verse 27. Chapter 8, verse 27, I, Daniel, fainted and was sick certain days. Afterwards, I rose up and did the king's business. I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. Because of the understanding that he had, and he saw the future calamity, and the future problem, and the future uh, persecution that will come upon the children of Israel, they were so fearful in character. The oppressive tyrant that will arise, rule the world in the latter time, in the latter days, came vividly before him. Because of that, he became sick. Because he considered the period that will come upon the children of Israel when that vision will be fulfilled. The, the, the point is this now. If the vision could make such a, an impact upon the prophet and make him sick, what impression or impact will the accomplishment of that vision really do for those who will be living through those days? The Lord already tells us. He tells us in Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. When all these things that in their soul, that is so in vision, when everything will come into real reality, then the impact on the people will be very, very terrible. Luke chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. 
That is when the interpretation, the when the fulfillment of the prophecy of Daniel, of the vision, the dream of Daniel will come to reality. This is what will be happening at that time. It will be the time of the great tribulation actually when the culmination, the climax, the very heights, the peak of this sea will be fulfilled. In verse 26 we are told men's hearts will be failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Let's come back to Daniel chapter 8. And then you are going to find out what made Daniel to feel the way he felt and what made him to think the way he thought. We're looking at Daniel chapter 8 and we're looking at verse we're looking at verse 27. And I Daniel fainted and was sick certain days. Afterward I rose up and did the king's business. And I was astonished at the vision. He understood it. Because of that, he was surprised. He was amazed. He was astonished at the vision. Why didn't the other people feel astonished, amazed, and surprised like he did? Because in the latter part, the last part of verse 27, but none understood it. But none understood it. And as we come to the Bible study, and we look at all these dreams and visions, and the prophecies of the things that are coming on. If you do not have any understanding of what we are reading, if there is no cogitation, no thought, no meditation, and you are not considering what we are reading, it will not have any impact on you. You will come and then you will go back the same as if nothing is going to happen. But if you will apply your heart like Daniel applied his heart, and he actually thought about it, he sought for the interpretation, and then he got the interpretation understood, that understanding of the vision, that meditation on the vision and that illumination that comes upon you, that revelation that comes upon you as you understand, it will bring such an understanding and it will bring such an impact and effect upon your spirit that even for days and weeks of meditating, what it will happen now, what if the rapture will happen at any time and then all these things that we read, all these things that we see, everything will come to fulfillment. It brings a great, great impact. Let's look at Daniel chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 10. Daniel chapter 12, verse 10. Men shall be purified and made white and tried. The people who understand is going to lead us to really seek the face of the Lord. If you are not born again and then you look at all these things that are going to happen, it makes you to see. It makes you to meditate. It makes you to fall on your knees and say, Oh Lord, I need salvation. Oh Lord, I need regeneration. I need restoration. If you are backsliding, you will be telling the Lord because of the things that are going to happen. And because of the great, great pain. And because of the great difficulty that is going to come upon the people of the world. Then you say, Lord, I just need to be born again. And if you are backsliding, you say, Lord, I just need to be restored. It is that understanding. That brings that kind of impact and conviction, and you want to call upon the faith upon the name of the Lord so that you will be saved. And if you are born again already, the understanding of such a vision like this, the understanding of revelation like this will make you to seek the Lord so you can be sanctified and purified and made holy. It's the people that understand. They are the people that seek the face of the Lord, and then a great work of grace is done in their hearts. Look at that. Daniel chapter 12 verse 10 many shall be purified and made white and tried but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand because the wicked people they don't apply their hearts to the word of God backsliders many of them don't apply their hearts to the word of God and the sinners those who are kind of adamant in their sin and those who are deep in their sin and those who are rigid in their sin those who are committed addicted to their sin they don't want to understand they may hear the word read they may hear the word interpreted they may hear the word applied but because they do not want to understand they remain in their wickedness they remain in their sin but it says but the wise shall understand is the wise people that actually become of understanding us. And that understanding of the wise actually will lead them 
to have the sorrow of heart. If there's anything amiss in their heart, anything amiss, anything going wrong in their lives, it will lead them to sorrow of heart, conviction for their sin. They say, I know this is coming, and I know the fulfillment is going to be terrible upon the people of the world, and that leads them to repentance, to, that leads them to conviction, that leads them to conversion, that leads them to real salvation in the Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. For godly sorrow walketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. Godly sorrow, when you have real understanding and you know that this is going to happen and you see the picture all painted before you and you know that at the latter days, at the end of the days, this is what will happen to the people of the world. You say, oh Lord, this leads me on my knees and I just want to seek your face and have real, real salvation for godly sorrow walketh repentance to salvation. Not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world walketh death. Let's come back to you. That's uh, Luke chapter 21. Once again, Luke chapter 21, where you really have understanding of what is going to happen at the end of time, in the latter days. And you know what is going to happen as these uh, prophecies and these dreams and these visions of Daniel, as they are being fulfilled, and you know that it's going to be a time of perplexity, a time of pain, a time of terrible persecution for the people of the world. A time that people of the world will seek death and they will not be able to see death. A time when real, real suffering and sorrow will come upon everybody. Not only in Israel, but in the whole world, all the nations of the world. When the Antichrist will rule this world with real terror and that great tyrant will come upon the people and such great suffering will come. When you have understanding of that, it's going to make you to prepare yourself and prepare your heart and prepare to seek the face of the Lord. We're looking at Daniel, uh, this uh, Luke chapter 21. I read verse 25 again, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations, not just the distress of one nation, but distress of nations. That means that the calamities that will happen at that time, the pressures that will come at that time, the pain that will come at that time, the difficulties that will come at that time, it will not just be for one nation, but for nations, distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. What then shall we do? What's the attitude of the person who really understands and who knows that heaven and earth may pass away, but the word of God shall not pass away? What would be the attitude of the people, the action of the people, the supplication of the people, the prayers of the people? What would be the heart stirrings of the people that know that these things are going to happen? We're told in verse 24, here's what Jesus said as a result of what is coming, as a result of what will be fulfilled. As a result of the great calamities that will come upon the people of the world in the latter days. Here is what Jesus Christ said you ought to do, I ought to do, we ought to do. So that we'll be prepared and the days will not come upon us on our ways. It will start before and take heed to yourselves. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and the cares of this life. So that they come upon you on a ways. It says that the people that do not understand, the people that do not have any understanding of these prophecies, of these dreams, of these visions, and they're just careless. And the cares of the world will come upon them. And then the day will come upon them suddenly without any preparation for the Lord is saying, as you study and as you understand and as you know that the time is very much at hand it says here is what you ought to do that you need to take it to yourselves to your life to your Christian experiences that the salvation you have you hold it fast the holiness experience you have you hold it fast knowing that you have to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord what if in the time of carelessness, in the time of temptation, in the time of trial, in the time of persecution, and you forget all these visions and dreams and all revelations and prophecies that were studying, and then you become careless and you throw away that Christian experience of salvation, of victory over sin, of holiness, of righteousness, and then the Lord meets
with you and you're not prepared that's why the lord jesus christ himself he says take it therefore unto yourselves there are some people that say they believe in eternal security that it doesn't matter once you are saved you are forever saved and even though they read about these prophecies and about these dreams and visions oh they say i'm saved it doesn't matter what i do it doesn't matter how i live if it doesn't matter why did jesus tell his own disciples take heed to yourselves lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and the cares of this life so that they come upon you unaware in verse 35 for a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth and you know there are people that say that the great tribulation will only be limited to israel will only be limited to the nation of israel but here jesus christ said it will come upon the whole earth upon the whole earth the vision that we're reading about and all the dreams we're studying about all these things we see in daniel is not a localized matter it is something that is going to encompass and it's going to overwhelm the whole earth that's why it says in verse 36 watch it therefore and pray always watch it therefore and pray always that she may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man it is meditation upon the word it is kind of thinking upon the word of god that gets you prepared that gets me prepared that gets everybody in the church prepared all the children of god prepared for the coming of the lord so that at that time when all these things were reading about shall come upon the whole earth you will not be here in jesus name the vision had no impact on others who heard it because they did not understand they did not understand it if daniel's contemporaries in babylon had understood that a mighty king of fierce countenance would rise and that he would be a tyrant more wicked than any king who ever lived on earth if they had understood that he would oppress israel more than any persecutor ever did if the children of israel if the people of god the jews in babylon at that time when Daniel was relating all this dream, ambition, and prophecy and revelation, if he had understood that the Antichrist will come and then the tyrant will come, he will violently oppose uh, through worship and cause their daily sacrifice to cease and profane the temple. If he had understood that he will continue for a definite period of time and that he will only be cut off by a divine stroke of sudden supernatural judgment, then they would have been able to prepare themselves but in the case of those people they didn't understand and they didn't prepare themselves that's why the children of israel have continued suffering even until this time i pray that we will understand i said we would understand and the way it affected daniel it will affect us as well in jesus name and i'll come to you divide the bible the study tonight to three parts number one the divine perception through an angel the divine perception through an angel uh, you need to understand uh, uh, the word of god if you don't understand are you going to apply it to your heart if you don't understand are you going to take it to heart and are you going to allow it to have such an impact and such an effect and such a kind of pressure upon you that you'll say i'm going to jettison reject and repent off and take away and cast out whatever will hinder me uh, from following the lord until the very end it is the understanding the perception that helps us to be able to say i'll get myself prepared that's why we have number one divine perception through an angel number two the destructive power of antiochus antiochus and the name is not there but history is fulfilled as fulfilled that prophecy already or already was studied where there are three a's and those three a's impacted the nation of israel and also the rest of the world the first a is alexander the great and the second a is antiochus and the third a will be an the antichrist alexander the great antiochus epiphanes and then the antichrist and in the case of uh, alexander the great already we have studied that that he was the king and the emperor of greece at the time of uh, after the Medo-Persian empire 
and it came with fury, it came with anger, it came with real great power and persecution upon the people of God. And then he died, his kingdom was divided to four parts, and then one person rose up out of those four parts called Antiochus Epiphanes, and he did great, great evil upon the land at that time. But then they thought it's still going to come, that is the Antichrist, and when that Antichrist comes, it's going to have real great persecution power is going to cause real great pain upon the people of the world point number three the deceptive policy of the antichrist the deceptive policy of the antichrist i come to number one number one the divine perception through an angel daniel chapter eight Daniel chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 15. In Daniel chapter 8, verse 15, it says, And it came to pass, when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision, and sought for the meaning, then behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. You see something here that is very much commendable, and something that is exemplary. Commendable, number one, number two, exemplary. It's something that we ought to praise the Lord for in the life of 